going to see the country design process of half header. So the step of uh, is that uh, step for creating this we like that uh, first of all we have to open this Trivado software. Uh, then we land in the, the script. Now the next step will be create project. And then you can see this uh, create new Trivado project user. Then we click the next button. Then we uh, write the name of the project. For example, here we are creating. Okay, and create the project from that. Too. So all the uh, related folders will be shared in that particular project. Also. Then we'll click the next button. Then we will click on this RTL project button. So all the other option will, will be moving because these are the advanced option. Uh, we are creating the RTL project. So we will click on this RTL project and just click on this. Do not specify the scope at this time. Next, after that, we have to select the FEJ, which is which will be used for implementing the half header. For that, we'll first of all click on the category and select the general purpose. Package will be CPP 236, and the speed uh, will be minus two. And after uh, clicking on those uh, parameters, we will get the required FEJ in the second row. Okay, so this is the required FEJ where the number of LUTs are 20,000 FEJ. And click on next and see the something and click on finish. Okay, after uh, finishing it, we will land on the, to the main uh, page of this project manager page of this Rivado. So now we have to uh, create three uh, source states first, go to the design source, then the simulation, and then constraint. Okay, so as you can see here sources are there, design sources, constraint and simulation source. So first of all we will click on this add button and just create a add a design source. After that we have to click on this create file and we will write uh, the name of the design. So here it is uh, okay. and the, make sure that the file type should be Verilog and the location should be local to that project also. So after that we will click on finish okay and uh, then uh, here you can specify the ports of uh, the half header you want so uh, for example here the input ports will be a and direction is uh, here is input and then uh, next port is b and uh, then two output port we have first one is uh, sum so we'll select the direction as output and click on and write it as and next output will be carry. So we'll be writing it as carry. And just click on OK. So now we can see the updating tab here. So our design source of half address is being created. So just double click on this, and you can see here we have a, a, this Vivado software has created a module. And half header and it also determined our inputs and output as a b and sum and carry so after doing this uh, we can uh, see so uh, after creating the module uh, we have uh, now you, we have used the structural modeling indent and the sum is defined as sum equals to a this is the sign of xor a uh, power b and uh, and carry will be like a m percent b so here we have created the design of the particular half header which we are going to design again. Okay. So just we have to click on control plus S or we can see the asterisk sign here is removed. So now it is safe. So uh, our next step will be to check uh, whether this uh, design is correct or not. So for that we will click on this RTL analysis here left side and click on this open elaborated design. So we just click on this open elaborated design and click OK. And we'll wait for some time and we'll see the uh, structure of uh, basically RTL structure of this half header which we are going to design. Okay, so just wait for two minutes. So, this process will take a uh, time of around uh, one minute. Okay, yeah. So, here we have the RTL design of the particular half header. So, as you can see, two input ports A and B are here and uh, uh, two output ports, sum and carry are here. Okay, so these are defined by using the structural model. So now, after verifying the design of the half header, we will now move on to the 
creating a uh, test bench of for this design okay so for that we will again move to the sources and just click on this here add sources and the shortcut for it is like allow alt plus a so we will click on this plus button and then go to this simulation sources and click next create file now we will uh, give it name like this uh, adder and underscore tv so we will uh, give a name like uh, test bench so that we can uh, easily identify it as a test bench okay now we will click on this finish and uh, for the time being we are ignoring we can ignore the port definition here and we can just write uh, in that uh, particular uh, side of this point okay so we are, we are ignoring here the port declaration and after some time as you can see uh, our simulation sources are uh, our simulation source file is created so here, here the screen tab half hidden underscore tv so as you can see uh, as, uh, we have ignored this uh, uh, port declaration so we have only this module definition uh, so now uh, we have created the test bench so as you can see here uh, we have uh, created that module uh, adder underscore tv the name of the module is like this so as you can see here we have uh, defined the a and b as rect type and sum and carry are of wire type as you can see in our uh, design the sum and carry will be wire type because we will be dri driving the output from that and input a and b here in the design they are of y type so here we have taken this as rect type because we are storing the values of a and b through the test cases which we have considered below so, so that is why we have taken the a and b as rect type okay so a and b is rect type and sum and carry are of y type so and here we have just linked uh, this uh, this module with the previous module so as you can see uh, here the name of the module will be same as the module name of the design so it is half header okay so now half header uut unit under test then dot a bracket a dot b bracket b and this a will uh, be the a which we have decided, defined over here and this dot a will be the a the port that is defined on the design side so by writing this line, we are just uh, connecting the test bench with the design so that we can test the unit. Okay. So after that, we are writing this initial begin and given it time de time de unit delay of 10. Then we have written this dollar monitor A, B, S, and C. So here we can see that uh, the output will become uh, like A, B, sum and carry, and all these input uh, A, the values of A and B will be given like this. Okay. So now we will click on this uh, simulation, run simulation step. Okay. So first of all, we have to save this. Okay. After that, uh, in the left side, we can see simulation. So we will click on this run simulation, then run behavior simulation. So it will again take some time. Uh, okay. So as you can see, uh, the design is being simulated. Now the design is simulated. So as you can see here, we have uh, got the timing diagram of the unit. Okay. Yes. So as you can see, these are the uh, output values for the half header. So first case, when a and b are zero, sum and carry will be zero zero. Then we have given a is zero and b is one. So a zero plus one will be one and carry is zero. And similarly, a and b will result on sum zero and carry one. So, uh, so by that we can verify the functionality of our uh, design of the half header and in the, at the starting where we have uh, seen this delay the red line it shows the delay of 10, uh, 10 time second uh, nanosecond which we have given here okay this then after this 10 nanosecond the simulation start taking place and we can also see the output of this thing in the TCL console so here we can also verify the truth table of this particular design. So this output is coming from the line that we have written in the test bench that is dollar monitor. Okay. So dollar monitor by writing dollar monitor we can monitor those outputs. So, so now we have uh, created the design and we have also seen the design in the RTL side and now we have also created the test bench for the particular design and we have seen the timing diagram. So the next step will be creating a constraint file so that we can burn this program into the, uh, the FPGA and see the functionality of this half header through the FPG. So let's uh, create a constraint file for that. So again we have to go to the sources 
and just click on this plus icon add sources now the third thing uh, the first thing that we have to do like this uh, now the uh, third step here it is written as the first step add or create the constraints so next click on next then text create file and we'll uh, write the name of it like this half header okay so uh, this file is created the, the format of this particular file is dot xdc okay just click on finish some time yes uh, this half editor xtc file is created here so for cons for constraint uh, what we are doing here is we are uh, just uh, uh, taking a particular uh, file of uh, this constraint here okay so just uh, let me put the file here so uh, we have this uh, master constraint file for the apg board so as you can see for the, our basis 3 apg board we have this master constraint file here all the um, ports uh, how the how the all ports can be used for this it is written here but it is uh, by default it is in uh, commented file we have taken this from internet so now uh, what we are going to do we will just uh, uncomment those lines and those ports which we are going to use in our particular uh, design so uh, for that uh, we will be using the switch for giving the input as you can see there are 16 uh, switches in the FPG board so we will be using those switches for giving the input so I will just uh, uh, use four, uh, two switches uh, the V17 and V16 here so what, we, what I will do I will just select th those things and just uncomment it so, uh, just select it and click on this so as you can see, uh, we have taken this uh, uh, V17 switch and we have uh, given it as port get ports A. So here you have to write the value of your port. So first, uh, our first input port is A, and then we have to use this I/O standard that is LVC CMOS 33. It is a default standard, and here we also have to write this port A. Same thing. And next set property, we will write the package pin is. We will be using this V16 uh, switch, and it it will be mapped to the port B. And again, we have to write for I/O standard LBC MOS 33 port B. So this, this, these two lines are uh, we don't have to remember those lines. They are just available to us, and we'll use, we'll be using. And in the next class, <coughs> next year we'll be seeing that how we are going to create is using this Vivado only. Okay. So, uh, so for the timing, we'll be we'll be borrowing this file and just uncommenting uh, those ports which we have needed. Okay. So switch we have taken now. Uh, for input we will we have taken two switches a and b and now for output we will be using two leds okay so for that we have to go to this led section and just we have to uh, uncomment those two leds okay so let me take two leds here So uh, this, yes. Uh, so uh, I'll just select those two LEDs and just uncomment it, uh, and will okay. So as we can see there, uh, E19 LED will be using uh, for this some output port. So uh, in your FPGA board, you can see the LEDs, and it it is uh, it is being labeled as E19. So that I will be using as some. So our uh, because our output port is. Some as we can see in our design that our output port is sum. So one LED will be used for the output of sum. So that I have used here. So we have to write it two times. Okay, one time for I/O standard, one time for this uh, <coughs> package pin declaration. And, and next port is carry. So I will be using carry. Okay. So for uh, so after that, uh, we have to save this. And as we can see. Uh, According to our design, we have given two inputs that is A and B that we have taken as the switches which are like this V17 and V16. Okay, and um, we have uh, the two output ports that are uh, sum and carry which we have taken as two LEDs. Okay, for LEDs, we, uh, for output, we can take LEDs and for input, we can take the switches. So now uh, all we have to do is we have to just uh, click on this generate bit stream. Now, after writing this constraint file, we have to uh, click on this generate bit stream 
so that a, a bit file is generated will be generated and that bit file will be burned to the apg board okay so just click on this uh, generate bit stream and click on yes okay so this process will take uh, some time so uh, it will take around 1 minutes so you just have to wait for around 1 minutes and then the prompt will come like your uh, bit stream generation successfully okay so uh, now as we can see uh, this prompt is uh, this prompt come that is that the bit stream generation uh, completed successfully okay so uh, you have to wait uh, till this prompt is come if if any if you if, if your code has any errors or any misplacement of quotes then you will get the error so if all things are running smooth you can get this prompt okay so now as we can as we have generated the bit stream now we will uh, uh, click on the next step that is the open hardware manager so click on this open hardware manager so we click on okay okay so now uh, open hardware manager as you can see here uh, below the generate bit stream right okay now click on open target and click on auto connect so just wait just wait to connect it automatically uh, it will take um, hardly 5 to 10 second here so as you can see uh, our board is being uh, shown in here like this zilinx bizilang e21018 this is the uh, model of our, our uh, processor x7c9 so now all we have to do we just have to select this board and click on program device okay so when you click on this program device now you can see the location of the bit stream file that is half header dot bit so finally we have generated a file that is dot bit in that is in dot bit format that we are going to burn it in the apga so if anyone uh, don't get uh, this board connected to their laptops or system so they can just export this file uh, with the help of a pen drive and burn it to uh, that system where the apga is connected successfully okay so now in our uh, in our system it is being connected successfully so we are just going to program it okay so just uh, click on this program button and uh, our apga is programmed successfully so now we'll move on to the apga side uh, and I, i will show you the functionality of the code which we have implemented okay so as as we have uh, created the uh, <coughs> constant file for that now we have uploaded our program to this apga board so as you can see uh, when we click on this program device here uh, and we'll see that we have a bit file here now we'll click on this program and when the we will click on this program this yellow led will glow so this led shows that your program has been burned to this apg now now we have to check uh, whether our uh, program is working or not so as you can see we have taken two input ports that are namely v17 and v16 so as you can see these two switches here uh, these these two switches are v16 and v17 here so these switches we have taken as input so we can say this is a and this is b so when a and b are zero so our output will be 0 0 so output we have taken the output as uh, this as we can see here e19 and u16 so these two are the leds as they are in led column so e19 and u16 are the leds so as you can see here we have two leds that that are e19 this is e19 here and u16 so these two are the leds that will give the output so let us check the functionality of the half header so as we can see when a and b both are zero so the output is zero because no led is glowing right now so when we click a is equals to 1 so as we can see when a is 1 b is 0 this u9 this e19 that is related to our sum port here as you can see this sum port is is linked with e19 so this this will uh, uh, this will glow this led for sum so a a1 b0 is equals to sum 1 and carry 0 similarly when we click this a0 and b1 so sum is 1 and sum sum led is glowing and a carry led is off right now and the third case is there when both a and b are 1 so our expected output will be sum is 0 and carry is 1 so as you can see this led is shifted to the right side so this uh, this u16 led which is showing the carry portion here so this carry port is linked with this u16 so this so now when a and b both are high this u16 will glow so by this way you can verify we have verified the functionality of this uh, half header 
using this FPGA board. So as you can see, we have 16 switches here. Uh, we will be using these switches for giving the input and these LEDs for the output. And this is the seven segment display, which we can use in the further programs to uh, for the different application and your different projects. So this is uh, this is basically a cover complete board, and we can use this for many application. Okay.